Thank you very much. So uh, welcome to the session. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you're here to see me embarrass myself with JavaScript or if, it, uh, if it's something else, or if we want to see a battle, like the final frontier. Uh, I hope I, uh, well, I, I will probably disappoint you a little bit, but ho hopefully not too much. So I don't need this slide. This is what, what he told you about. But uh, you can look at the social media coordinates. If you want to connect with me after the talk, you can follow me on any of these medias, and, and, or all of them, if you want. Uh, and uh, let's just get started. So this is a question I ask myself, why am I here? Why this talk? Why did I submit this talk? Because I, I, I quite, quite frankly, I, I'm, I don't know much about JavaScript, but let's, um, let's, let's look at why I, I chose to do this talk. And, and that is, service are rendering is something that seems like is coming back again. And, and uh, for me, this was kind of fun to see all the, the, the posts on, on social media and, and blog posts around that, oh, this server-side rendering thing, this is a new thing. Now we're going to render the JavaScript on the server. We don't have these slow-loading React pages any longer. We can do it on the server. And, and I was thinking, well, haven't I heard this before? And, and yet again, a, a disclaimer, I, I, I'm not a JavaScript developer, so, and I, I'll stay away from uh, as much of it. But, um, and also, another disclaimer, I know we're talking about Java and JavaScript, and I had this kind of confrontational title about Final Frontier and stuff. Well, I, I'm not going to create a battle. I'm, uh, note, there, there are no verses here. So, so I'll just talk about both of them. So a little bit verses, but, but uh, not that much. So if we look at JavaScript, when it came around, that was stuff you did on the client, right? It's something you had in a browser. And after a while, it started rippling down to the server and, and with the popularity of, of Node, for example. So, so server-side scripting was kind of a thing again. Uh, and if we look at Java, it's actually the same story. Who, who, how many of you know that Java was originally made for the client? Right? It was made for the small devices and the browser and the applets in the browser. That's what Java was all about. But it very quickly conquered the server side and kind of became the de facto technology for creating ser uh, applications on the server. Uh, so, so both of these are both client side and server side. So, so far, this comparison is, 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 is very uh, non-giving in, in that sort. And the title about this is the final frontier, if there is one thing that is true about this, is that it's not the final. This will go on and on, everything. And, and that's because we're, we're kind of seeing the same things over and over again. We're reinventing the wheels again and again and again. So we've, we've done server-side rendering in 1999 with Java, or even before that. And, 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 and then now we're doing it with the, with the JavaScript. Uh, again, and we think it's a new thing, but it's just the same technologies coming out in, in new, or the same concepts coming out in new forms uh, ever now and then. But we're obviously here talking about web development. And, and with uh, web development, we're talking, here's a little versus, so it is client-side versus server-side. Uh, and, and if you look at the, the client-side rendering that we're sort of used to nowadays. So, so if you have a browser and we have a server, if then a user comes and, and clicks on something in the server, a request is sent to, uh, on the browser, it's sent to the server, something is, is uh, uh, made there, and, and, and uh, a response is sent to the, the client. So this is kind of the initial load. And, and this is where, where uh, it may be a little. So this is where you see the. The, the, the black page with, with React loading, right? So because this JavaScript may be very heavy or, or it can be lots of resources putting up there. But subsequent requests are, are fast, right? Because now you're doing everything in the client. So you're rendering the page again and again, depending on what the, the, the user is doing, uh, it, it's happening in the client. And of course, you do some occasional 
uh, asynchronous or synchronous requests down to the server, but you have all the kind of logic in, in, in the client. So, so we, if we look at server-side rendering then, it's kind of the same picture in the beginning. So, so, so we have the user clicking on the browser, there's a request to the server and some HTML is rendered and sent up uh, to uh, the client. And, and this is kind of the, 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 the pure HTML kind of thing. You may have some JavaScript or other resources and stuff there, but it's a smaller page, so it's faster to load. So the first initial load would be very quick. And this page may even be uh, rendered beforehand, so, so it's just immediately there. So the initial will be faster, but the subsequent will be just the same speed because it's rendered on the server. So every time you do a, 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 a request a new page or, or request a new stuff, you're rendering the, the, what the users see on the server and, and return to the browser. So it may be a little laggier when, when you're doing kind of uh, interactions. So what are the advantages then of server side rendering? So one of them is performance. So as you see, the, the, the first load of the page will in the initial payload would be much faster with server server rendering. And you can also do a lot of, of, um, of, of uh, uh, caching and stuff. But if you look at the, the initial page, you see it, this is the, where uh, we do the, the, uh, the uh, server server rendering, the, the, the JavaScript, if we, if we do it in, in the, in the uh, client side, it's slow, you know. But uh, with the server, it's, it's faster because it's rendered on, on the server. It's also cacheable because these pages are, uh, most of the resources on this page can be rendered beforehand, like, like GitHub pages, for example. It's just there. Uh, so, so, so if it catches this, this uh, uh, stuff with the HTML, it would be much faster. And, and uh, next request, this page is already rendered, so it's just returned on the next request. Also, if you're doing a lot of data fetching in your applications, uh, you're doing it, it, it closer to the data source with server server rendering. So when the user clicks uh, on the browser, a request goes, you go to maybe several turns to the database and back again, and this will be much faster than if you're doing the whole turnaround uh, by going uh, via the... Uh, uh, the client, or, or have to go through an API to, to re retrieve more data. And, and then we have security. So, so if, you, if you're doing the, the client-side rendering, uh, you would typically have maybe some API keys or data, and especially logic on the server, no, on, the, on the client, in the browser. So it's, it's closer to the user, it's easier for them to manipulate, it's, it's, it's kind of less secure there. So with server-side rendering, you move this stuff uh, down to the server so it's safer. And, and it's not exposed uh, to the clients in some way. It's also easier for search engines to optimize, uh, to get better uh, hit rates for your page because uh, the search engines don't need to learn JavaScript to, to, to troll your pages. So, so, so when these bots are going around to, to do, uh, figure out the indexes for the uh, search engines, uh, these statically rendered pages, uh, HTML pages, are much easier for them uh, to, to figure out. So that was very quick and dirty about server-side rendering. So let's talk about Jakari. And, and Jakari is, 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 is all about its specifications. Right? So, so it, it, it's not a, a, a framework or, or, or library or anything. It's, it's specifications that specifies how some piece of technology should, should behave. And it's usually uh, uh, described in a human readable form in a textual document, like a HTML or PDF or something. Uh, we have an API artifacts that, uh, that developers are using that's on Maven Central and a TCK or test compatibility kit that it used to verify that an implementation fulfills all the requirements of the specification. And, and a implementation that does that is a compatible implementation. And, and uh, we need at least one 
open source compatible implementation to have a final specification. So, and and the, the latest release of Jakarta is Jakarta E10. And uh, that was released uh, in uh, a, a little bit more than one and a half year ago. So, so it's been out for a while, it's fairly mature, uh, and uh, that, that's the, the current version. And as you see, there are lots of specifications in Jakarta E. And many of these are, are uh, targeting uh, web UI development. And that's the specification we're going to look closer to. Uh, we're also working on Jakarta 11. And Jakarta 11 will be released in July this year. So it's just a couple of months away. And uh, you can see all the blue ones here are updated in Jakarta 11. So that's kind of updates to, to the, since Jakarta 10. Uh, and we also adding a new specification for, uh, for data. That is uh, simplifying the, the data retrieval using the repository pattern. If you know Spring data, you know Jakarta data, it's, it's basically the same thing. Uh, we also have a smaller, like a subset of the platform, which is more the traditional web application, is the Jakarta 11 web profile. And, and these uh, will peel away the, the more enterprise flavored uh, specifications, and, and so you can have a little bit smaller runtimes. And as you see, data is part of a web profile as well. And, and new in, in 10 was that we introduced the Jakarta 11 uh, core profile. And in, in 11, we continue evolving that profile. And this is a profile that is targeting microservices or headless uh, services, uh, RESTful web services, or call it what you like. But this is kind of the, 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 the smallest possible uh, runtime of Jakarta E uh, will uh, implement the core profile. And w w one key specification here is the CDI Lite which removes all the dynamic stuff from CDI that was resolved at uh, runtime that is now being resolved at compile time. So you could uh, do uh, native images if you want by uh, using core profile implementations. So let's look at the, uh, the web-centered uh, uh, specifications here and see how they compare to uh, today's uh, JavaScript frameworks. And I'll, I'll start with pages or uh, JSPs or, or, uh, or uh, Java server pages, as it used to be called. Now we call it Jakarta pages. And what we're going to do in all of these is, is to sort of look at the JavaScript version of it, and then uh, see how it compares to a, a similar technology in Jakarta EE. And, and let's look at Node first. And, and a Node has, has some... some um, uh, I, I think this is where I expose myself for not being very knowledgeable about this, but there is something called, called uh, uh, EJS or templates. I, I know this is, I think this is actually a, a technology that is on its way out or being deprecated or not used anymore. Are anybody using it? Nobody, so yeah. That, that is something new for you as well. So, uh, <laughs> so, so it, 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 it's very... It, 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 it's simple. It's, it's like a, a simple uh, HTML uh, uh, file here that you wrap in a, a node server-side app. So, so you have this, this app here that we, you, you kind of set it. This, this is what you get when you just generate a new Node.js uh, application. And, and it just starts the, the, the server and, and, and listens on a port and, and it does, uh, renders whatever views you have here. And, and this demo here is, is just saying, the, the uh, uh, just saying sort of the hello world. So, so I'll start this one, if I can remember exactly how this one was started, because all these, all these JavaScript stuff are started in, in, in different ways. So, and, and I just remember now that this is the demo I, I didn't try before I uh, went there. And where no, <laughs> you start this stuff. Is it node app JS? I think so. Yeah, so, so it started. And then I can go to it, and I think it was 8,000, wasn't it? Uh, and it should say, oh, crap. Uh, let's just look at the app. Is it 8080? Yeah. Good. 8080. So, so it says EJS demo, which is not, not that revolutionary, because that's sort of what's here. But, but, but I can also add stuff, you know? So, so, so I, can, I can add this. Um, 
uh, th th this greeting, which is just like a, a conditional saying, if, if this flag is true, it, true, it's always true, we can set it to false afterwards. Then, uh, and it's not geekon, it's j prime. Uh, so, so, um, uh, so, 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 so I can, can, can uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, so I can add this text, and, and so, since it's true, it, it, it will be uh, rendered. If, if it's false, uh, it, it's not. So, 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 so all this is, is, is rendered on, on, it's done on the server, but it's in the browser. So this is kind of the servers are rendering you know, this templating stuff. So if, if you look at how this compared to how a JSP or Pages application would look like, uh, it will be a little bit more verbose, but not, not very much. So, so the, the, uh, the, the, the index page would look like this. And, and if we compare this one to the EJS page, it's very similar, right? It, it's just this, here it says just doc type HTML, and this has some, some, some directive for, for JSP there. So, so it's, it's exactly the same thing. So, so I'll just run this one. Uh, let me see there. I'll just start class right here. So if I run this, I should be able to, uh, uh, I think I'd need to stop the other one because it's on, on, on port uh, 8080. So there you go. I'll just rerun it. Uh, stop and run. So there you go. So it's starting, and now I should go to port 8080 and a, a JSP duke. And, and it says hello from JSP, which is, which, which is basically the same thing uh, as the, the EJS demo here. So what if I just take this stuff here and, and just copy it in? So, 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 so th th this is actually exactly the same thing. So I just copy it in, I set it to true. Here I would have to actually uh, 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 redeploy, uh, redeploy the, the, uh, this application, so, so it's a little bit more round trippy than than the EJS, but but it, it does the same thing, right? And also here, uh, I, I can execute this this logic and, and just redeploy it, and uh, it's gone. So so it, it's basically the same thing. So you can actually take in a one of these EJS if that's not cool technology anymore, because. You know how it changes. What was cool last week isn't cool this week. So if it's not cool any longer, you can just move it over to JSP because that's always cool. And, 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 and you can just use it directly there. These simple. So as you see, the, the R, uh, again, it's, it's J prime, not Geekon. So, so it, it, it's just the, the, the header of the, the HTML file, more or less, that changes for, for this simple application. Of course, in your business application, you may have a little bit more complex logic than this. Uh, but uh, and if you want to know more about pages, uh, all the all the specifications in Jakarta are, are under jakarta.e/specifications. There you get the list of all of them, and and then you can use the short name if you remember it. Just type in pages slash four, and and you get uh, the latest version. So, so this is kind of the URL structure we have for all our pages. All right, so let, let's look at uh, some uh, serverless technologies. And to compare that, I, I want to use the, the uh, React co uh, server components. And when I, uh, I, I wrote this after a long time ago, and when I started creating this demo, I figured out that, hey, uh, React server components is just kind of an idea. It hasn't been released finally yet. What everybody is, is, is using is, is, is Next.js. So, so to compare about the, the client-side scripting version of, of React is to put everything in a JavaScript and load the page like this. That's why it takes a long time, because this bundle.js could be very, very big. So this is the client-side rendering version of, of, of React. Uh, but if you looked at, at Next.js, they actually have some server-side uh, component uh, rendering available. And, and let's look at that and see how that compares to a simple uh, server. Uh, so I'll just stop the one I was, uh, no, Glassfish can run, because I think this is on a different port. So I have this, I call it React Duke, even though it's Next.js Duke, Duke, but it, it, I think Next.js and, and, and React is sort of related anyway. So, 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 so in this one, it's, it's, it, it's also a, a, a fairly simple application. It just 
starts these pages components and has this index page saying hello world. So, so it, it's not that super, uh, super advanced. But if I want to start this one, I can go to say React, oh. React Duck and do the, I think this one is NPM run dev. Why, why do it differently? I mean, uh, as, uh, when you remember it. So if I go to localhost uh, 3000, it says hello world, which is pretty cool, right? And, and here it's running, so, and here on the server I can do some changes and it, and, and it renders directly. So this is, this is really cool, right? Uh, but let, let's uh, see how, how we should do this in, uh, in a servlet. Oh, sorry. So, so if I have a very simple servlet uh, that I have somewhere here, uh, this application also has just one. It, it's a little bit more verbose because you have everything here uh, than, than the, the um, uh, hello world that just says hello world. This is the function, but, but it's sort of it, it's called from this other stuff. So there are some other things that making this happen happen somewhere else. In Jakari, this is all you need. You, have, you say it's a servlet, you say it's a path hello, and, and you override the do get method because we're doing a get request. So, so if I want to, to, to return the same text here, like hello world here, uh, what I would have to do it is to, yeah, here you can see it, it's, it's a request coming in and a response going back. So, 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 so what I have to do is, is to take the response uh, and uh, get the writer for the response and then a print line, for example, uh, hello world out there. And, and if I do that, I can then just uh, take the, oh, server duke, I'm actually running in, in a brand new server. Uh, I, I could have run this in, uh, in Glassfish 7 as well, but I chose to use, for some reason, to use Glassfish 8, because uh, Glassfish 8 is Jakarta 11, so this is really brand new. Uh, so I'll, I'll just make sure it's, it's uh, redeployed here. Uh, and then I should be able to go to, no, sorry, I'll just get rid of this one. I'll go to the servlet duke. And here I have, uh, I've used the Jakarta starter. I'll show the link for it. So you get this nice page here. And it goes to the slash hello endpoint, which has hello world, which is exactly the same thing as, as the React stuff. And if I want to, to you know, do, do the, the fancy logic here as well, I can, I can very quickly do that. So, so, so it, it, you, you see, it's, it's, it's sort of more uh, verbose than, than what you would do in, in a React. You would just type a, a function that returns whatever you want to do. In, in servlet, you, you would have to, uh, you know, uh, do it in, in a servlet get method. But it's basically the, the, the same thing. Servlet you can find more about here. So let's look at phases, or JSF, or, or uh, Jakarta server phase, or Java server phases, which is uh, initially was called. Now we can call it Jakarta phases. And I, I want to compare this to, to HTMX. And HTMX is, it, it's a comparison that is a little bit like, like apples and oranges, but, but still it's, uh, it's uh, they have some of the same stuff. Uh, so for, for HMX, uh, you, you, I'm just going to show uh, what, what they have here in their, uh, on their web page. They have these, these examples. So, so, so if you look, for example, they have one for uh, upload a file, which is, which is pretty cool, uh, that, that you can just uh, take this and, and put it into a, a web page and, and have a file upload, which is kind of a, a nice component uh, to do that. I'll, I'll demo this in the next demo, uh, but just uh, I'll compare it to a Jakarta service technology here, and, and then we'll look at the demo for this one afterwards. So for, for uh, uh, Jakarta phases, there are some, some, some kind of crude uh, stuff that is uh, uh, specified in the specification, but it's, ba it's made for having a library on top of it or a, a uh, component library so somebody else has, has created. And one of those, uh, the most popular there are prime phases. And prime phases also have all these, uh, these, um, uh, uh, these cool uh, stuff. Uh, they also have the, uh, uh, the, the, the file upload. So, so if I, 
So if we go in here, you, you also have the same sort of uh, code for, for a file upload. And, and I'm going to demo this one. So, so let's just look at a, a Faces application first. So, so the, the Faces application here is a, uh, a the Faces you, you need to configure that is using a, a, uh, a, a Faces uh, a servlet, uh, and, and that is done in a, a uh, WebXML file that, that you say, hey, start this Faces servlet. That, that's basically uh, all you need to do, and, and just activate uh, Faces. Uh, so, and, and here these files are called XHTML. It's not HTMX, it's XHTML. And, and uh, if, if I want to have a, a, a file upload component here, for example, what I can do is go to the Prime uh, Faces page here and, and look at th this uh, source code. And you can see you get the XHTML code for it, and you get the Java backend code for it. So, so if I take the... I can take just everything from, from the Java uh, stuff here, just copy it, and I'll, I'll create a file here called uh, new Java class, what was it called, uh, file upload view, where, where I can, can, can just um, uh, paste everything from, from the uh, uh, web page in here. And uh, there we go. And then I can do the same thing with the view component. I'll, I'll just copy everything from here and uh, put it into the, the uh, XTHTML uh, page here, like this. And when I've done that, I'll just stop the old server, stop, and I'll start the Glassfish and make sure the faces is redeployed. One's up, there we go, redeploy. So if I, if I open this one on localhost 8080, oh, uh, 8080, uh, faces dick, oh crap. <laughs> this, worked, uh, on, this worked on my machine, I could say, but this is my machine, so it obviously it doesn't. Sorry? I, I deleted something I shouldn't have deleted. Oh yeah, that that one. Yeah. So so I have to get rid of. I have to put it in here. I'll, I'll take. I paste it there, and then I'll take. Yeah. Uh, no, okay. I need to close it. Yeah. So, yeah. That that's why I. I was never any happy uh, during the pandemic since uh, I never got any help when I did these talks uh, at, at home. Uh, so we'll just close it, H body. So now, let's see. It's not a demo unless it fails at least once. So there we go. So so here you can see I have a lot lot of these file upload things, that, and and uh, they had three examples here. So so the first one is is very simple. I can I can just uh, pick a file and and submit it and it will upload. I'm I'm not doing anything with it on the server, but but uh, but I'm 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 just. Uh, uh, running here, so so, so, so it's, but but you also can have this uh, validation stuff. So so if I, I choose this file uh, and and submit it, it will say okay, I, I expected a PDF and not a, a JPEG, and you can also see uh, in the Glassfish log that it it, it lo logs that something was wrong, and it also has this uh, multiple file selector. So 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 is it is very simple to 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 create these UIs by having these component libraries ready for you. And, and you can just kind of uh, tweak them here and there, um, uh, which one you want to use, like, like is it the one with, with validation and, and, and stuff, or, or do you want to have the uh, multiple file selector uh, that you want to use? And, and these are using the expression language to go, just call into the uh, file upload view, which is uh, the, uh, the uh, Java file that you have on, on, on the back end, which is named uh, file upload view. PrimeFaces also has some other cool components, uh, like the uh, uh, the, the um, uh, a full-fledged text editor. So uh, I've created a template. So so you can use this PrimeFaces text editor, and I'll just give it some some, uh, some properties there. 
And by doing this, you, you actually get a, 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 a full, let's just reload it, make sure of this, if I load, oh, come on, face is dick, it's there. So, so you get a full-fledged uh, uh, text editor in, in your browser by just adding this simple component. And, and also, one of the things that, that uh, HMX is sort of, yeah, we do a a AJAX. We do asynchronous stuff. Well, all of this, AJAX has been in, in, in Faces since uh, 2009. Right? So, 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 so all of this is, is kind of old stuff that has been around. Uh, and, and you can mix and match the JavaScript and whatever you want uh, in this stuff. I'll, I'll do some HMX demo uh, in, the, in the next one. So the text editor, for example, is, is super simple to, to add. And, and there are, as you saw in the, the showcase library, there are lots of these components. You can just more or less copy the code in, uh, modify it here and there, and put some uh, CSS on it, and you have your business application done. And Faces is on, on this page. Let's look at a specification that is not part of the platform. But it's MVC. And MVC has been around since. It was planned for Jakarta, Java EE 8. But it never made it to the platform. And it's kind of been developed by the community outside of the, the platform. Now it's a part of Jakarta EE, the, all the projects and stuff. At Eclipse Foundation, we're developing there. It's at version 3.0. It's planned for Jakarta 11. It will be what we call a prospective specification. So it's not a specification that is required to implement for the platform, but it's something that kind of has a little explanation mark beside it, because this is something you should look at, because this is something that may come later. And this one, uh, MVC Im uh, implements the action-based MVC uh, model view controller pattern, which is a perfect thing for, for uh, server-side uh, rendering. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, look at a simple MVC application. And, and in this one, I'll, I'll actually use JSPs, because that's the default what we, we give for, for MVC. So if you want to try out MVC, um, this one is on Jakarta 10. You, 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 need, you need a provided like Jakarta API for all the Jakarta applications. And since I'm running on, on, um, uh, on this is the MVC deck. So since I'm running on, on, um, on 10, you have to use the, the, the release version of, of MVC, so you need kind of the API artifact, the one that is made for, for MVC. But since I'm running on Glassfish, I don't need the implementation, but Glassfish incorporates it uh, by default. So it's already there, uh, and Wildfly will do it. They're on the, on the way of doing it, and we hope to, to get, convince IBM to do it in Open Liberty as well, and then it's practically on its way to make it into the uh, platform specification. So, so for, for MVC, it's, it, it's a very simple Jakarta REST application. So, so this is the configuration you need to do for, for Jakarta MVC. And then I can create the, the controller part of, of the application. And see, this maps very well to the request response pattern. So, so I, have, I have the controller that can be, it's a little bit mis, uh, misplaced to put it on the class. That's kind of a short, hand notice because every of these methods are in fact the controller. So, so putting it on the class level means that every method that has a, a HTTP get or put or post or delete or whatever is a, a, a controller. So, so you can have more controllers in a, in a, in a class that, in that way, but you can also have one class called Duke's controller like this. There are several ways of, of showing which view to render. One, the simplest way is just to use the at view annotation to, to point to a, a page and, and, and return void from the method. You can also return a string that is the name of the view. Or you can return a response which has a string that is the name of the view. Or you can actually create, instantiate a view and return it. So there, it's very flexible to whatever programming model you prefer. Uh, so. so and, and, and the view itself is in, in uh, JSP. The default location is in, in the views folder. You can, you can define where you want to have it. But this is the, the same application as we had with the, uh, 
uh, with the JSP example in, in the first one I showed. So, so it just dis displays hello world. So, so, so let, let's make sure this one uh, redeploys and uh, just start it here and go to the uh, MVC Duke. Uh, and it should say hello, I think. So it says hello world, which is nice. Uh, so, so let's, let's uh, do a model as well, because here we, we have the controller and, and, and we have the view. So let's, let's uh, uh, use a model. And, and MVC comes with a default model. You can use uh, any, any Java class that is a CDIB in here can be the model. Uh, but, but let's use the, uh, the default model. And, and that is called models since uh, there is already a model interface in the platform, so we, we didn't want to have any conflicts. So it's called models. Uh, and then uh, we, we can populate the, this model by mo uh, model. It's, it's basically a, a hash map. So I can put here name uh, and then Dick. So, so I just put stuff in there. And, and then in, in the view, I can, I, I can render this. By, let's do a H2, maybe. Uh, and then I can um, use the dollar I'm sorry, there uh, and, and write name. So, so, so or, or maybe I should say hello name. And, and if I rerun this one, it, it should now display uh, hello Duke, because now it, it fetches this from the, the model. So everything is rendered on the server created this, uh, this uh, uh, through the JSP templating engine. And, and there are multiple templating engines available for a Jakarta MVC. It's very flexible. It's very easy to create a new one. We have, uh, I think, 12 that we are guaranteeing working in our implementation. Among them are ASCII doc or, or Thymeleaf or whatever other uh, templating engine, uh, engine you want to use. And, and as I said, it's very simple to, to, to extend it uh, with another one. Uh, and I'll show that in, in the next slide. So the MVC is just about these two annotations. That's a kind of the simplest, simpl uh, simplistic uh, way of doing it. It would be interesting to see how HMX works with MVC, because that's kind of a component library that, that works uh, everywhere. So, 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 so one way of doing that that I actually don't think is necessary is you could create an HTMX view engine that implements our view engine interface and implements these two methods, supports and process view. And supports would just be uh, more or less looking for the file ending of whatever file you have your HTMX component in. And, and then a process view that calls into the HTMX uh, processing view engine, if that's even necessary. So, Let's do an experiment here. Experimenting on stage is always fun. And uh, let's uh, remember this upload form. So, so what if I just copy this and put it, let me see, put it in my, my uh, MVC JSP page. I'll just paste it here and restart this application. There you go. So if I now reload it, and now I have a upload from HMX here, that I can I can choose the, the, the file and, and do the upload. Of course, it doesn't do anything because I'm I'm not calling back to the MVC uh, class. And and if you look at the, the code, it, it's it's posting to to a slash upload. But if I, if I really wanted to to um, to do this in in uh, in MVC, what I could do is is create a um, Vo uh, void uh, up upload method. I can call it whatever I, I want to do, but let's just do it like this uh, and and say that this is an at post, and and I want to render a, a different view afterwards. So 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 th this would be the way uh, 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 done or whatever. So, uh, so 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 this is how I could handle that. Um, that uploads. So uh, in this post, uh, I would have to also to make sure it, it, it's not on the hello. I, I would I would set the at path to to be um, 
uh, upload. And, and what I also would have to do is, is, is change list on so it's a hello slash upload or something like that. So, so this is how we can hook it into to MVC and just actually use HTMX uh, directly with the uh, current technology. I, I'm not going to run this because I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to fail. Uh, but, uh, but this is kind of the gist of it, how you would integrate an HMX component in, in an MVC application, which seems to me like a, a fairly good fit. So it standardizes the action-based MVC pattern. So, 10 minutes left. So let's sum up and, and we're uh, open for some questions. So server start rendering is back. And it's been a while that it has been common. First time I heard it, like talked about this, is actually before the pandemic at a conference. The, uh, I was sharing a table at the conference with uh, some of the attendees from, from the client side, JavaScript world, and they were talking about these cool server side rendering techniques that was coming. And I was yeah, maybe it's, we've been there. And, and, um, and, and, but now it's been more and more and more coming uh, these years. Uh, so, so some of these are, this is how I kind of map them over. Uh, but but they, can, they can go in kind of sort of the maps to, to the server-side rendering kind of way of doing things in Jakarta E. Whatever technology you choose to do on the server is kind of up to you. MVC is a very good one that can integrate to, to, to uh, most or all of these. And I haven't even mentioned Vaadin. Like Vaadin is pure Java and, and uh, it's an amazing library for creating a very rich uh, web applications. So Jakarta 10 is the platform that is currently out there. Uh, Jakarta 11 is coming this July. Uh, the theme for 11, if we look back to 9, we did the namespace change in our applications from Java X to Jakarta. Uh, in 2022, we, we introduced the core profile in Jakarta 10. And now in 2024, two years later, uh, we're doing Jakarta 11, uh, we'll, which will embrace uh, Java 20, uh, 21. We will support virtual threads. Uh, we're embracing records throughout the platform so you don't need to use classes or whatever, such as in, in persistence, you can embed records. Uh, you can validate records with, with the bin validation. Uh, and, and we're introducing the simplified data fetching that comes with Jakarta data. Also, we're moving towards a more CDI-centric approach. So everything is more or less a CDI bean. So for example, the, the persistence uh, units don't need to be injected with the persistence context any longer. It can be injected with that inject. Uh, we're also removing a lot of stuff, old stuff that we don't need anymore. So it's all coming back. Every 10 or 20 years, we're seeing these, these new technologies that is actually old. We're just reinventing the wheel over and over again. And if you want to learn more about Jakara E, you can go to jakara.e. It's a very simple website to remember. If you want to get started with Jakara E, you can, you can of course reach it from Jakara E website, but you can also go directly to start jakara.e, where you have a starter that you just select a couple of, of, uh, of uh, options and click generate and you have a project running for you directly. You can also choose to have a Docker container, Docker container for it or which implementation you want to use, which Java version and everything. So, so you, can, you can very quickly be up and running with Jakarta E and, and test out these examples or other stuff uh, by using the Jakarta E starter. Uh, I write uh, some uh, blog post on my, my uh, uh, blog. Uh, every week I post something or even more often. The demo code is on uh, my GitHub area of Duke server components. And uh, of course, I'll make the slides available so you can have these stuff. Uh, if you want to learn more about Jakarta E, you can go to LinkedIn Learning and, and uh, try it, the Jakarta E overview course that is there. It, it's, uh, uh, if you have a su subscription for LinkedIn Learning, you know, then it's on your subscription. If you don't have a su subscription, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, and I'll see if I can give you a free link for it. So, so try it out there. With that, I say thank you very much for listening, and uh, I hope you have some questions for me.
All right. Anybody? The beer is, okay, we have a question there. Hi there. So as someone who's actually used that before, uh, one of our biggest problems was getting the front end guys to do all styling and everything with JSPs. And it was basically front end versus back end, um, which like modern frameworks like React, Angular, they kind of separate that uh, along with uh, client side uh, rendering. But yeah, uh, what about handling that kind of situation server side? So mostly front end guys, are they gonna be writing JSPs and uh, HTMXs? And using prime, fa uh, sorry, not prime faces, yeah. Jakarta faces. Yeah, so so that's a very good question. So so the, the uh, obviously the advantage of having JavaScript on both on the server and the client is that you can use the same guys. But uh, sometimes you would have uh, some are more writing in business logic and have doesn't have a graphic gene in themselves. Like me, I can create a nice web page if you threw it at me, but. But somebody is just um, can do this JavaScript magic or CSS magic in, in whatever pages, and they would they would be able to use the same technology. You can you can mix in JavaScript and CSS in even even though the, the pages are done by servers or rendering, and you have the logic there. So you would separate it with writing the logic in Java and, and the UI and, and CSS and HTML, and you don't really need that much more there. It wouldn't be the same thing. The same people, more or less. But yeah, I, I guess what you're saying. All right, thanks. All right. Thank you very much. I have some stickers uh, here if, if you're interested. Yeah. What, one last question. Yes. Yeah, so if I have like different devices, so mobile phone, yeah, yeah. tablet, desktop, yeah. um, so I can still have Jakarta. Uh, pages that will detect which is the the device that it is uh, calling, and then I can have different renderings and so on. Yes, especially for example, if you're using Faces, uh, they will have uh, those components will discover which device they're on, and they will they have mobile uh, versions of them as well. Yes. Okay. No problem. Thank you.